Fire up your home or office with ultimate speeds. Keep up with the next generation on Dialog 4G. Connect to the fastest network with burst speeds of 40 Mbps. Go 4G with monthly plans starting at just 1,400 rupees. Dialog, the future today. Hello and uh, welcome. Um, it's a nice story uh, that uh, we want to tell you with the first day today. The Papare.com's World Cup news breakdown brought to you by Sri Lanka's number one sports hub, www.thepapare is here with us. And uh, we want to talk about uh, cricket's big summer. The 11th ICC Cricket World Cup 2015 with uh, Friday the 13th opening ceremony and Valentine's Day, first day with two games. And uh, both uh, host countries, New Zealand and Australia, down under in action on the first day itself. Uh, let me introduce you to uh, two of our best known faces. Uh, next to me is uh, Roshan Avesing. He's um, a well-known international cricket commentator in addition to being uh, one of the uh, long-serving uh, cricket officials in Sri Lanka. And uh, a real expert here. He's played in a Cricket World Cup. Uh, he's uh, a Sri Lanka cap. And Jan Mubarak, uh, both of you, welcome uh, to this uh, first edition. Yes, the Cricket World Cup uh, tournament opener um, with uh, Sri Lanka participating against uh, New Zealand. In fact, that became the first match of this uh, tournament. A 98-run loss. Um, Batting not really up to uh, the uh, mark. Um, I don't think it was uh, horrible bowling, but definitely not uh, penetrative enough and fielding that uh, usually we would do too well. Gentlemen, what exactly is the story of Sri Lanka cricket as it is? You like to start, yeah. <laughs> I'll, let you, I'll let you start. I, 3.30 is a big target uh, to chase down. And it's hard to hold the batting uh, when you're chasing 330. But honestly, I don't think that we have the firepower in the middle order, middle uh, middle order, to chase down scores in excess of 300. So our game plan or strategy for the World Cup needs to be that up. If we are going to bowl first, we need to keep them under 300 to 280. And we need to plan our bowling, our selection, whatever our strategy. As you said, not penetrative enough uh, when you're bowling to pick wickets up and uh, to try and keep them to, to uh, 280. We are, not, we are not a team who's going to uh, score 80, 90 runs in the last 10 and chase down a big total. So uh, it's the first game of the World Cup uh, against, against New Zealand, a team who we've played against uh, regularly in the last uh, couple of months. So they probably have the uh, hang of us. They have had the better of us. So let's see, maybe when we play a new opposition, uh, we might uh, you know, have the better of them. Do you know that uh, it was 9 degrees uh, at Christchurch and Sri Lanka won the toss and uh, put New Zealand in and uh, that uh, 331 in the end didn't look like um, a story that would have happened midway through after a superb start. The first and over 77 runs and that's not surprising with uh, Guptill and uh, McCallum. Yeah, it is not because uh, particularly the way Brendan McCallum plays, I think he, he has the X factor. He brings in so much of pressure on the opposing bowlers, and I think bowlers are under pressure uh, when uh, Maclum bats because the bowler is so uncertain of what Maclum might do next. So that is something that creates so much of pressure in a bowler's mind. Besides that, I also felt just adding to Jahan, I, I know that uh, Sri Lanka needs to keep keep the runs down, but then again on the other side, Sri Lanka's strength is batting. I don't think uh, Sri Lanka's bowling is their strong point in this World Cup. But I also felt, for some odd reason, that Angelo Matthews earned his captain. You know, uh, if you look at the bowling figures, Jeevan Mendes had two for five and didn't bowl after that, and he spun a ball. Now, you would expect 
the Sri Lankans. If you look at the Sri Lankan performance in Australia or, or anywhere outside Sri Lanka, I don't think fast bowlers have won games for Sri Lanka because the strength of Sri Lanka is always spin. It used to be Murlidharan and now uh, Ranganahera. But anyway, it has been spin. The, the difference here is that uh, New Zealand have uh, played in six uh, uh, semi-finals in uh, World Cup cricket. And um, as a host, they have uh, built up a very young side with a lot of uh, experienced players being brought in and in form. Um, like Kane Williamson, one of the brightest prospects, young prospects in world cricket, also getting into a half century. Brendan McLum just chasing after everything. And then there was Corey Anderson. Um, despite his uh, reputation for being an absolute mauler, he was able to really plan out a superb uh, recovery action when Sri Lanka seemed like um, coming back into the game. Well, this is why I said that Angelo Matthews heard. He should have, you know, if you look at, if you look at the Sri Lankan bowling makeup, Sri Lanka did not go beyond two overs from Jehan Mubarak. Oh, sorry, what am I talking from Jeevan Mendes. Then he should have used uh, Rangan Herat for one more over. Dilshan should have bowled a few more overs. Then uh, Angelo Matthews, he had bowled just six overs. So if you look at the makeup, the guys who had been economical, have not really finished their quota, but instead they brought in the used Lasit Maling. Of course, he was expected to be a dead bowler, but is Juan Kulasekara fit enough to be a dead bowler? Okay, you brought that name up. Uh, two of the most experienced uh, new ball bowlers, Lasit Maling and Juan Kulasekara, bowled uh, ten overs uh, each and picked up one wicket, uh, went for something like 70 plus and 80 plus. Is it a problem with the captain deciding or, I, or the team plan? Just to add to what uh, Roshan said, I feel there is a reluctance, especially when Corey Anderson, as you mentioned, got things going in the middle and let overs. There is a reluctance uh, to bowl the leg spinners against the left hander, uh, Rangan Herat and Jeevan Mendes. There is a worry that he might. But go what about the off spinner, Jehan? Maybe I, 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 I would say even bowl the leg spinner. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Let him have a go because no, that's a you. period of consolidation. And if uh, their key batsman is going to go after you, maybe take a few extra risks uh, on a turning track, maybe. And Jeevan does bowl a good googly. Yeah. Uh, Rangana does bowl the one that goes straight on. So that's uh, maybe an option worth taking. Luke Gronke, um, he has been fantastic, especially against Sri Lanka on either side of the wicket. Uh, as a wicket keeper today, he had three victims and he scored a vital 20 plus not out uh, in a. 73 run partnership with uh, Corey Anderson of just 37 balls or something like that uh, in the end to really put New Zealand into the 300 plus four. Uh, where was Sri Lanka really letting New Zealand get? Uh, is it the drop catches or is it just that they were not there up to the mark with the with the batting power of uh, New Zealand? Well, I, I personally feel that uh, Sri Lanka got it wrong. They used the wrong bowlers at the wrong time. Again, I come back to the initial point I made about spin. If your spin bowlers are bowling well, why not use them? I mean, there is no hard and fast rule to say that you go with your dead bowlers all the time. You need to have a plan A, B and C. Let's not forget that Lasit Malin is just coming back. And we know that Nuan Kulasekara is not the Nuan Kulasekara we all need. I mean, he used to be the banker those days, where you know, the go-to man, but not anymore. He's, he's dropped his pace and he's not effective, sadly, which is not good news, I hope. Kulay comes back because he, he can also bat and field. So I don't want to harp on the fact that the spinner should have bowled him, but to me, Sri Lanka should have kept New Zealand under 300 if our spinners were used up more effectively. You know, Jeevan should have bowled at least another four to five overs. Dilshan could have come on and bowled a few more overs. Rangana had one more over. Imagine if we could have got, say, 30 overs out of the three spinners and Angelo Matthews. The three spinners bowling 16 overs between them and giving away under 50 runs yeah, okay. in, a, in, a, in a run rate where they are averaging more than six. So you could see that they have they have bowled and maintained a score and a run rate below the the average rate scored by New Zealand. Yeah, but I think also the maybe the team went in with that mindset that uh, the wicket is going to seem a bit as you said it is nine degrees. We want the toss put they mean. We are going in with the mindset thinking, okay, this is a semi track, the conditions are going to help the fast bowlers. We've played uh, Suranga Lakmal when maybe they thought about playing uh, Satyatra Sena Nayaka, but they've gone with the fast bowler. So they think, okay, yes, the wicket's going to do a bit. And they go with that mindset for that entire 50 overs. When 
if it's not going to help, maybe halfway through the innings, you need to pull back, uh, reassess, and uh, bowl more with your spinners. Yeah, when Sri Lanka started their reply, scoreboard pressure was definitely there. There was a uh, 20,000 crowd and um, very good ground support uh, for New Zealand. But the openers, uh, they started off well. Well, not the, uh, the required run rate at the start of the over, but they survived up to the um, end of the uh, power play session. Uh, whereas New Zealand made 77 in the first uh, 10 overs and then 73 in the last six. Uh, Sri Lanka started off uh, with a decent partnership of 47 before Dil Shan's exit. Well, I think we we needed a, a more a bigger start. Uh, we are we are not going to score 73 off the last six to chase down 330. Uh, we don't have the personnel to do that. So we need a bigger start where we get maybe 70 off the first six or at least uh, 50, 60 off the first six to get us going, and then we can pace ourselves through the middle overs. Unfortunately, at, um, at the top. Uh, Dilshan Tiriman has just come in there I and mean, he's been batting in the middle um, up until this World Cup, he's been playing in the middle order. So it's hard to expect him to suddenly open and set the world afire. Uh, so maybe Dilshan needs to step it up a gear. Uh, maybe even uh, have somebody coming in at three who's going to go hard at the ball and get the momentum into the innings, which we never really got. They were always just behind the rate and they struggled to get back into the but game. But gentlemen, at 124 for one, in the 22nd over. That was a decent enough start uh, chasing that 331. And then Sri Lanka lost uh, their last nine wickets for something like uh, 109 runs or so. That I think is the pressure, isn't it? I mean, that's the scoreboard pressure you were talking about. And also, those two good deliveries by Bolt. Now, if you look at those figures of Bolt, now he's gone for 64 runs. Now, if somebody never watched him bowl or never saw the game, might think this guy has considered a lot of runs. But if you look at that passage of play where he came in and he got the wickets of Tirimana and then with Vitori providing the wicket of Jayawardana, what Sri Lanka needed at that point was Sangakara and Matthews to bat them to a, to a decent situation with Jayawardana out quickly. But what Bolt did was he dismissed the, the established batsman. See, Sri Lanka always needed a batsman who was in at the other end, even if they lost wickets, for the other batsman to keep supporting. When you dismissed not just Tirimana but Sangakkara, that I think was a decisive spell. And that was a spell that Sri Lanka was not going to recover because after Matthews, let's look at the batting. He got an opening batsman batting at number six, which I think is, is not right. And then from there on, Jeevan Mendes at seven and very little to show. So as chasing 330, that's asking for too much. Yes, yeah, as, as we went along and uh, these wickets uh, fell down uh, with uh, Angelo Matthews uh, running out of partners, at one stage, um, Sri Lanka into the, um, the 40th over were 209 for 7. I thought uh, even from that stage, there was uh, uh, some sem semblance of uh, um, batting skills to be shown, especially by a couple of the youngsters, but that never happened. For after being there for two months, uh, I know playing in a World Cup is different because most of them are playing for the first time. But is that a, is that a worry for Sri Lanka um, as they prepare for the rest of the tournament? No, actually I think that, uh, New Zealand have now got the hang of Sri Lanka. Uh, they know where to bowl to a, a batsman. We've been playing them over the last two months. Uh, when Tisara comes out to bat, when Jeevan comes out to bat, they know exactly where to bowl to us. And I think that uh, that mindset uh, even we are on the back foot. Uh, they have the psychological advantage playing against Sri Lanka in New Zealand. And we have to uh, I know, not read too much into this match. Lasit is just coming back from injury. Uh, Thiri is just finding his feet as an opener. Dimuth is finding his feet as a middle order batsman. Uh, so hopefully against uh, lesser opposition, uh, Lasit will get his rhythm back. Maybe the middle order will click. Uh, get a good partnership, support Angelo uh, in the middle and uh, I am confident that things will definitely look better when we play against uh, teams other than New Zealand. Now that's very important because uh, now when you take the case of uh, New Zealand, uh, five bowlers picked up a couple of wickets each and uh, Daniel Vittori as expected uh, the most economical. Um, everybody at the top picked up wickets and that, that was their formula for success. I think Sri Lanka needs to realize 
understand that now today uh, Suranga Lakmal was brought in as the sixth bowler. Uh, okay, his uh, economy was good enough, but he didn't bowl at uh, Brendan McCallum and Martin Guptill and Kane Williamson. Probably it would have been a different story if that happened under those circumstances. So there was just one good plus point there um, to, to bring in uh, Lakmal and he bowled a, a fairly decent line and length. So coming out of this, as, as we look at it, the 98 run loss, Sri Lanka not able to bat uh, 50 overs. Um, where would Sri Lanka put their emphasis on, apart from the fielding? Well, I, I, I feel the strategy should has to be a strategy that is more weighted towards the batsman because I think the strength is batting. I feel if we bat first, it runs on the board and then it's trying to defend it. I 100% agree with that. Yeah, because the, the, but the problem is, can we defend scores? You see, now we've been struggling to defend scores. Now the bowlers have to be told that there, ha there is a limit that this batsman can get. Now if, if you... I mean, if we go back to the Zimbabwe game, which is a practice game, of course, which we shouldn't worry too much because practice games are played for different reasons. But still, Zimbabwe got through with seven wickets remaining, 28 balls remaining, and all, all of Sri Lankan bowlers were given the opportunity to bowl. So, whilst runs on the board should be the strategy, the bowlers also need to be looking at areas of trying to defend. Now, this is where Haritha, the, the, the combination, is important because we have brought in Sachitra Sena, who we all expected to be our lead spinner in New Zealand, but he doesn't play in this game, so that's a worry. Then if you look at our fast bowlers, Marlinga just coming back after an injury, Kulasekara seems to be off colour, Kisara Pereira doesn't seem to be doing anything right with either the bat or ball. So, Jehan, it's, it's, it's a few things that we need to do because the next game is Afghanistan and, and Afghanistan is a team that can spring a surprise and that's something Sri Lanka doesn't want. Yeah, after this loss now, this Afghanistan match becomes uh, a lot more important because of Sri Lanka's performance. Now, is there a school of thought to make wholesale changes going into this? Uh, maybe Sri Lanka doesn't want to um, upset the apple cart too much, give them continuity, um, especially uh, those youngsters who have not performed up to expectation. What is there for the Sri Lankan public to expect um, in a tournament of this nature? Sometimes it's winner takes it all. Yeah. I don't think it's uh, it's too early to hit the panic button just yet. Uh, it's the first game. Afghanistan, yes, they can spring a surprise. Maybe in the 2020 format. Over 50 overs, I think we should uh, have the better of them. Uh, and I won't mess around too much with the, the combinations unless the wicket looks completely different, which I doubt. But um, what we should try and do is uh, the guys who just come in there, Dimuth is playing in the middle, uh, give him some time out there, let him uh, figure his game out. Uh, I would really, really like to see an informed Tissera Pereira towards the latter business end of the World Cup. Uh, that is what is going to win us the World Cup. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, the support staff has a huge role to play, as Roshan quite correctly mentioned, with regards to the strategy whether it's the captaincy on the field or the strategizing of the field with bowling plans, batting plans, how are we going to pick up wickets, uh, who are the bowlers we are going to target. Um, the off-the-field strategy is important and the support staff has to play a big, big role in getting us ready for that. Now, looking at the play on the first day, the two uh, host teams uh, in this World Cup uh, came up with stunning performances, 300 plus scores and really got out of tight situations. Now, what does that give to the rest of the um, participants, especially uh, the um, Asian teams? Two of them will be involved in tomorrow's game or, or in the second day's play as we um, look around it. But uh, is it that uh, South Africa, uh, Australia and um, New Zealand have uh, made a huge statement uh, in this tournament uh, with, with the sort of uh, performances up to now uh, in their warm-ups? Uh, well, uh, if you let me add, I, I think, Jahan, I don't know whether you'll agree, but I feel that uh, the three teams you mentioned seem should be the front runners, at least getting into the semi-finals. Exactly why you feel so? Well, I feel because New Zealand and Australia for obvious reasons, because they are playing at home. They, they should know their condition well. South Africa is a team that seemed to be complete. They got they got a very fine batting lineup and an innovative batsman in the caliber of 
the ABD Bidias who can just turn a game on its head. I mean, that 100 we got against the West Indies, you know, it was just phenomenal. You know, you, you wouldn't, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> put it, uh, or you wouldn't expect any other batsman to do that in world cricket. Maybe Virat Kohli could be an exception, you know, on his day where he could uh, score runs, Sangakara can score runs, but I don't know whether there is a batsman who can be as destructive as ABD Villiers and then the makeup of their bowling. Besides, is the challenges that Asian teams face playing in that in those conditions, Jahan should be able to answer that better because the Sri Lankan conditions, the Asian conditions are so different. You you go there, you know, you're up against the moving ball, you're up against the bouncing ball. So you will always the Asian teams will always start with a handicap. So England are bad. So England aren't playing good cricket. So that's why you, you wouldn't jump into a conclusion and say England, Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa. I mean, if, uh, if England get their batting uh, together, they could be a threat because the three teams you mentioned, England, uh, sorry, South Africa, Australia, mm -hmm. and uh, New Zealand, have a uh, pace dominant uh, bowling attack. And which is why you correctly mentioned that they will be the front runners. Uh, their bowling attack is very much uh, reliant on fast bowlers with one spinner who comes and bowls uh, in the middle overs. But apart from that, the other team that has that is England. Uh, but they are not playing good cricket at the moment. But uh, you never know. Uh, in those conditions, against subcontinent teams, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, India, they are, uh, it's well within them to pull off a, a win against us. And don't forget, England did beat India in the tri-series. Now, India yes. is a good side. And India in India or India in the subcontinent is a tough side to beat. Now, England, we did see how badly they played here or, or how poor they looked. But of course, they look a different side at the Morgan with no cook there with the batting order changing. But still, that England side being able to beat India in that tri series confirms what Jehan says. You get your act together, England can be a force to reckon with in those conditions. And also, the other side of the coin is the challenges countries like Sri Lanka, Pakistan, and India may have. And just to add to that, one other thing that it shows us is that the pitches are good. We've got 300 plus scores in the first two games of the World Cup. Uh, so that should send the message to all teams and to all team managements that we need our batting to click. We need big scores if you want to win matches and if you want to win the World Cup. We have to be prepared to put up 300 on the board. We have to be prepared to chase uh, 280. And the batting strategy and the team strategy has to reflect that. <laughs> Fire up your home or office with ultimate speed. Keep up with the next generation on Dialog 4G. Connect to the fastest network with burst speeds of 40 Mbps. Go 4G with monthly plans starting at just 1,400 rupees. Dialog, the future today. You're with uh, Papare.com's World Cup News Breakdown and uh, we would like to remind you that uh, the one-stop shop for the World Cup featuring uh, team profiles, news and all updates uh, that uh, is available on www.thepapare.com. Log in and uh, you'll find a lot more. A lot more coming up. I mean, uh, 49 matches up to the uh, 29th of March. That's a lot of cricket over there. I hope the weather will stay fine. But there won't be any interruptions and uh, this crazy Dakotlui system uh, doesn't come in. But uh, is there any possibility of um, one of the underdog teams uh, coming up uh, with uh, a major um, result uh, that would change the format of uh, other teams or the preparations? I think we did have it in 2011 when uh, England were virtually just surprised by an underdog team. But I don't know whether that can be done consistently, Haritha, because uh, it all depends on the level of cricket. I think Jehan very correctly uh, reminded everybody that Afghanistan can be a threat in T20 cricket, it's a different uh, format or different form of cricket. But when it comes to the 50 over, it, it looks so long, isn't it? You know, compared to the T20 cricket, you've you got uh, so many things to do and so many stages and phases of the game. So, I well, we shouldn't doubt uh, the ability of uh, the, the winners, as they're called. But uh, I feel uh, the main teams are, are too good to be uh, uh, defeated. Most of the, and most of the underdogs, as they were, are subcontinent teams like Afghanistan, Bangladesh, uh, UAE. 
whether in these conditions they can be perceived as a real threat unlikely the only team that i think can pull an upset is perhaps ireland mm. uh, because the Why conditions about zimbabwe maybe think? zimbabwe but i'm i don't know about whether they've got the bowling attack to uh, uh, to um, you know bring down an opposition mm. their batting is definitely good enough you know on the first day itself uh, there was a debut world cup um, performance from cory anderson in front of his home crowd for new zealand the man of the match award then um, aaron fringe uh, also uh, on his home ground uh, packed crowd at uh, the mcg dropped first ball went on to make the first hundred of this world cup and um, steven finn after being carted around came back to pick up uh, three wickets of the last three balls of the innings and then the first hat trick so there is uh, everything is not lost for some of these uh, lesser known teams you never know some of these bowlers uh, can produce uh, a, a telling uh, bowling performance i wouldn't say with uh, the batting itself but uh, fielding will play a major part there have been some outstanding fielding performances um, in in world cricket these days just talk about uh, south africa um, they have chased down big totals uh, they have been constantly hitting all kinds of big scores and uh, where do they actually uh, uh, get out of their chokers situation you think that chokers uh, are long I, no, i don't think that chokers that tag was there with them uh, i think especially regarding the world cup especially regarding world cup and uh, icc tournaments but i think the players in the team were not members of the team that choked there are guys in there who've not played in tournaments point. no one other thing jihad if, if you really if you want to call a team choker sri lanka choker so they lost two world cup finals Final. they lost in 2007 they lost in 2011 so sri lanka are all chokers really they come all the way and lose yeah the difference is that south africa always viewed as favorites and everyone expects them to win a semi final but what's happened to them is they've lost from seemingly win, winning positions they lost that semi final in 99 uh, then they messed up the dakot lewis in uh, 2003 yeah. uh, but i think the people who are there i mean they've got a new and i don't think they have that in the back of their minds saying that we lost this we lost in 99 we lost in 2003 i don't think that's there in the back of their minds um, so as much as we like to put the chokers tag on them i don't think they're prepared to uh, put it on okay the first two world cups uh, were won by the west indies uh, what would be their chances uh, especially with uh, a couple of their best players um, on, on form uh not not included in this team for various reasons a very young captain on the other hand jason holden i think the team is up just deteriorated so much it's a shame that west indian cricket is nowhere close to what we know them to be i mean if you talk to some of them some of those greats particularly the fast bowlers you know whom i met the great privilege of meeting and talking to i, I know that they how, i know how they feel and how how bad they feel about west indian cricket Uh, to be honest uh, I, i mean why is i want west indies cricket to do well because world cricket becomes healthy when you have uh, plenty of nations playing good cricket rather than you know one or two uh, i feel west indies uh, will struggle in this world cup and they will be lucky to get into the quarter finals because uh, uh, i don't know whether they have the depth in that side if if you are talking of a world t20 maybe yes we might uh, you know want to be or we might expect the west indies to do it but i'm not sure whether they'll be good enough to get into the quarter finals they're very lucky that they've got a relatively weaker group if they had got into this group where sri lanka new zealand australia and england are they would have a chance i mean even zimbabwe or bangladesh to get surprised well the last time the uh, tournament was played in the southern hemisphere uh, pakistan were the surprise package uh, winning through Uh, to take that cup and uh, the great uh, Imran Khan and they've lost uh, Mohammad Hafiz and on the second day when India and Pakistan play there won't be um, Ishan Sharma for India Mohammad Hafiz uh, for Pakistan what would be the uh, impact of Pakistan into the tournament both teams are trying to uh, you know find themselves uh, in the tournament they have players coming back from injury players coming back after remodeling the action atman is uh, coming back but is it i don't think it's right i 
he's, he's, he's not he's not in the squad. No, no, he's clear, but I don't think he's in the squad. He's pulled himself out of the squad. No, so he was removed from the squad, but he's not been included okay. even as a replacement. Then, then who's going to play instead of Archibald? I mean, uh, the their attack, bowling attack, primarily revolves around him. Um, so they need a spearhead for their attack. India will also be looking for a spearhead for their attack without uh, Ishan. Uh, who's going to come in? Who's going to be their spinner? Uh, Aksha Patel, Ravindra Jadeja, who's going to come in there? Uh, so I think those, both teams are finding their feet a little bit. It's a hard game, India-Pakistan, to start finding your feet. It's a big game. Uh, you ideally want to have done your homework before you come in there. But I think both teams which will be looking beyond the India-Pakistan game, uh, looking to go on to the World Cup quarterfinals, uh, get their combinations right uh, so that they can go on and actually win the World Cup. Jehan, when you, when you analyse cricket uh, in Australia and New Zealand, is there any distinct uh, situation at uh, particular venues where the home countries would have a distinct advantage or like playing in uh, a place like uh, Sydney, where an Asian country would have uh, the spinner's advantage against Australia well, in particular? Yeah, historically, Sydney and Adelaide help the spinners, uh, the subcontinent teams more uh, because of their uh, drier pitchers. Uh, Adelaide has very short uh, boundaries on the side. Uh, Sydney also has one uh, really short boundary on one side. Uh, whereas Perth, uh, Gabba are bigger grounds, faster uh, pitchers. So uh, playing and also don't forget the crowd factor. Uh, most of the Asian teams have good, good support in Sydney uh, and Melbourne and Adelaide. And that plays a huge role. We saw when Sri Lanka uh, played Australia and we won, uh, beat them at the MCG. Uh, it was not a packed house, but the Sri Lankans uh, outnumbered the Australian supporters there. So that can play a huge role uh, when it comes to you know these big matches. Uh, the crowd support uh, teams. We've been out of Sri Lanka for a long time. We've been on the road for about three months, and uh, you know on the road you, things can get uh, you can get lost, you can get lonely, you're losing matches. And then you suddenly, you feel at home. You go to the MCG, there are 10,000 Sri Lankan fans there, you feel at home. So that can have a big role. Sri Lanka usually now, I mean, this is the cricket uh, summer in, in this country. There, there's so much uh, domestic cricket being played, school cricket, everything. Um, there's a lot of interest um, on, on the game itself and the World Cup is really the icing. Um, when Afghanistan and uh, Sri Lanka meet next in eight days' time, um, Sri Lanka will be banking on, on, on the three big names uh, in the batting department. But what is the role of uh, the youngsters there? Um, well, I think the role of the youngsters is to support the big three. But I think more than that, what they'd be looking from um, the mm. Afghanistan game is for Lasit to get back into form. I think he holds the key uh, to our World Cup uh, fortunes. Uh, Lasith being on form makes a huge difference. It will help Angelo Matthews in the middle to make decisions, uh, to hold back his bowlers, to bring on his spinners, uh, as we were asking him to do. If he knows that he has Lasith to bowl at the death, he'll quite happily throw the ball to Rangan and to Jeevan in the middle and say, have a go. So Lasith What is the key. if I was to say that uh, we should also give the same focus to Tisara Pereira, bat, with bat and ball? So I think that's a decision the support staff has to make because you never know the situation this year is going through because if you looked at the way he played against New Zealand it wasn't it wasn't good because he bowled badly and I believe this is a, is a is a confidence player if he bats well his bowling it rubs off on his bowling and unfortunately if he doesn't bat well it seemed to rub off on his bowling as well now you look at the series where he was the man of the series he was left out and brought back he did his batting and bowling both extremely well. I mean, he got his runs as a batsman. But unfortunately, as Jehan said, New Zealand have seen too much of, of Sri Lanka, which is, of course, the other side of the coin. Or, or, or having said that, uh, Sri Lanka could have asked for a better preparation in going to New Zealand and playing in New Zealand. So you, you want to play there more. But I feel uh, Tisara should be... Tisara really should answer that question, Harissa, because I don't think it's a case of form. It's a case of confidence in Tisara's case. You've played in a Cricket World Cup. Where, where does this uh, uh, encouragement uh, come from and where does it lead, it, lead you? It comes from everywhere. It, it's in the dressing room. If, when you go to bat, if you know that 
everybody else in the dressing room thinks that you are the best person for this job, that you are the right person going into bed now, it gives you a huge confidence. Mm -hmm. If you go out to bed there thinking, you know, uh, maybe the other guy should have gone in, uh, or maybe the guy sitting back in Sri Lanka watching it on TV, you know, people are saying he should have gone in. If that kind of vibe is in the dressing room and in so on the social media as well, some act, uh, maybe it's even a fact, I know some professional sports teams do this, they do a social media ban. Uh, they stop Facebook, they stop Twitter, because you start, start reading a lot of negative comments about yourself, uh, about you know, people commenting on Facebook, about what you did, how you should be there, how you shouldn't be there, how somebody else should be there, and it brings this whole negative cycle in your mind. And I'm sure there's a lot being said about this at all. And maybe it's just you need a break from it, uh, take a break from it all, uh, forget later. But again, that's not a decision that you and I can make from here. That's uh, for the support staff up there and the team management to uh, get that in. And on form, Tisara Pereira can win us a world. Gentlemen, um, time is up and um, the Papare.com's World Cup news breakdown brought to you by Sri Lanka's number one sports hub, www.thepapare. Back and hopefully it will be a lot more positive winning note that we'll be talking. We wish the team all success. We thank you for being with us today. Fire up your home or office with ultimate speed. Keep up with the next generation on Dialog 4G. Connect to the fastest network with burst speeds of 40 Mbps. Go 4G with monthly plans starting at just 1,400 rupees. Dialogue. The future today.